Hello Patreons, it's Corbin from Corin.info and I'm thrilled to see you again for a new video. It wasn't easy to find an interesting topic, but since I recently discussed Linux, development, Windows and artificial intelligence, today I'll focus on Macs, specifically Mac M1, M2, M3, which are based on Apple Silicon, Apple's new architecture and we'll discuss virtualization specifically. But before, if you'd like to join us on Patreon, it's easy, it's on patreon.com, Corbin, and you can support me and explore all the videos I regularly publish. To find this, I'll show you on my computer, on a website called tart.run. It's not related to strawberry tarts or the tart you sometimes get in the face. No, no, here we are really talking about a tool that is dedicated to virtualization and that allows in particular to build, so let's say compile to summarize and to run virtual machines on Apple Silicon architectures. It exists, you can run it with VirtualBox, VMware, Parallel, but I've tested all these tools and find them a little slow, a little heavy. Here, what's interesting with Tart is that we touch native performances. I tested, it's impressive. Here on the website, it explains. I'll try to zoom in on the thing. But the secret of this tool, Tata, is that it uses the virtualization framework integrated into macOS, specifically developed for the first M1 chip. So it's very well integrated with Apple's hardware. Moreover, we can see here the small benchmarks. Essentially, what you can observe is that the gray bar represents regular hardware, specifically macOS operating on regular hardware. The blue bar is the same but runs in a virtualized environment, so we're at a performance ratio of 97-96%. It depends on what you do with it and, well, if you are in single core or multi-core and so on. What is also interesting about TART is that the virtual images you used are all online, actually. They can be downloaded remotely. It's convenient. I told you it enables you to run macOS but also Linux operating systems. Windows not on agenda. Well, there you go, that's how it is, can be integrated into interesting things like CI, etc. So now we're going up a little level. And it can be orchestrated like we would with Docker using a tool called ORCAD to create clusters, that kind of thing. Here we are dealing with more complex parts. I'll show you how to install it, run it, and what you can launch on it. You'll see, it's easy, enjoyable. To install TART, open a terminal on your lovely Mac Silicon M1, M2, M3 as I was mentioning earlier. Launch installation with brew. Type command brew install, you know it, it's classic. And then the repository is as follows, so it's cyruslab slash cli for command line interface slash dart. You'll retrieve the tool and install it on your system. Once it is installed, we can use it. If I type dart here, I'll have the command line with the commands, subcommands, etc. You see, we have simple stuff. Create a VM, clone a VM, run a VM. We can modify the VM configuration to launch the VM. So VM, it means virtual machine, a virtual machine. I didn't specify it. We can retrieve the configurations, list the created machines, log into a registry, log out of a registry. So the registers, that's where we can retrieve these famous virtual machines. Retrieve machine stops, retrieve machines from a registry or push them precisely to a registry. Then there is import, export and other tools such as renaming machines, stopping, shutting down and suspending them. We are on something quite classic that may remind you of the tool that Canonical created under Linux called Multipass, which allowed a bit of the same thing but under Ubuntu, and I believe there were versions for Mac OS and Windows. So there you go. The funny part is that when I visit the Tart website, I see images. I can't get over the name Tart, it feels strange to say, but I guess it's okay. Currently, images available, so you you can have your own repository, etc. But here, there, the images that Cirrus Lab offers for testing, well, for demo, for use. So we have Mac OS 14, therefore Sonoma, available in vanilla version. Vanilla 1, you know, it's for people with no taste for vanilla. It's the basic version, nothing special in it. After we have version, well, I said basic version, let's say light version, basic, normal. We have the version that integrates Xcode. Then you can install Ventura, Montreux, and what's funny is that we have Linux, and yeah, we have Ubuntu, Debian, and Fedora, which can be installed via Tarte. I suggest testing by installing macOS Linux. We'll explore image manipulation, setting up SSH access to images, and mounting directories. 
These are the kind of things we can learn during the test. In brief, basic information is provided in the TART version and documented in the TART documentation, aiming to give you the necessary foundation to begin. TART is distributed under fair use license, meaning you can use it as a good parent, but if you exceed 100 CPU, etc., you must pay for licenses. However, for us there's no money to spend, so we can't afford to buy any licenses. TART is a valuable tool, but it comes with financial responsibilities that we are unable to meet at present. After installing TART, I return to my terminal to clone a VM. Since there is already one available, I use TART and simply paste the link of the desired VM. For example, I'll take the latest basic Sonoma version. Forgot to give it a name, that's why I have the error. Put the URL, specify a name, gonna call it Sonoma. Here the name helps us find it later to manipulate if needed, i.e. retrieve the IP, retrieve the information. Image recovered, so I just have to do TART run Sonoma, here it is. I launch this and that, hop. Immediately, I have a window that opens with the Apple bomb, and it starts very quickly since it's native. Almost native. So there, well, I'm recording my video, so it consumes resources due to video encoding, as I'm doing this tutorial for you, but I tried it without recording the video, and it's faster, so don't rely on what you see on the screen. And there, I find myself with a fully classic macOS. What's funny is that it's very well piloted. I can minimize the window e.g. and it will be small. I can put it in full screen or large and it will be bigger. If I scroll using my mouse it scrolls smoothly and instantaneously. And then I'm not sure if I navigate to YouTube for instance I land on the YouTube website and I'm able to play any video and select anything I want. Do not judge me. However here the video becomes smoother. I am going to mute it as it is the advertisement. But here I have a video, you see it starts perfectly well, it's smooth, nothing happens, it's perfect. That's something that is more complicated to see. There is sound even, that turns. These are things that are more complicated to see on virtual machines like VirtualBox, etc. It can lag. There, I went full screen, I'm in full screen in my VM, it's working, I'm speeding it up, but it's working well. So, you're going to tell me you're on macOS and you have a macOS virtual machine, what's the point? For example, it allows me to do tests, deploy new things with Xcode, especially for development, etc. It also enables, why not, to access other systems, as we also offer macOS 12 and macOS 13. Additionally, you can create your own images with Tarte and explore other Linux options and more if you wish to do so. So there you go, I found it cool fast. So I didn't log in with my xCloud account, but here we are, we're dealing with smooth virtualization, closely tied to the OS, well in any case to the hardware, silicon, chip. So there you have it, I find it quite impressive. We will now try to launch Ubuntu or Debian. Well that'll change. So here I'll make a Tart clone. I put this and I'll name it Debian, without originality. So there, once again he will retrieve the disk. So he retrieves the image of the virtual machine that is on the repository. She achieves 600 mbps. Here it is, downloaded, so I just need to run Debian since that's the name I assigned it. And there, magic magic, I have a Linux that starts. So it enables me, like this on Apple Silicon, to have a functional Linux directly. Password and login on these images, admin, admin, nothing to look for, it's by road and something else, admin, admin. It's in the documentation. I'm on a keyboard, so if I type A, it gives me Q, Q gives me A, so you understand I'm using a QWERTY keyboard. Here I am on Debian, it's good, it works well, I have access to a complete Linux OS. As you can see, it's a Linux ARM64, so you can install any compatible Linux image in ARM64 within TART easily. Furthermore, Tate offers, as mentioned, Ubuntu, Debian and Fedora in its repos, but you can create more. So let's see how we make a homemade image, let's say it like that, with Tarte. So I'm going to launch the Tarte command, and actually we can create images from scratch. So how do we do it? If I look, we have the create command here, so I'm going to do Tarte, create, I launch it, and there you see it tells me on the command line, I can either, so I give it a name, dark reality with its name, 
and I can either create it from an IPSW, so that's the image format that Apple offers for all its versions of macOS, so we put its parameters and we follow it with the path to the IPSW that we retrieved with a tool or other, so it's often Sonoma or Show, that kind of stuff, there you go. But as it is already by default in the Cirrus Lab repository, we may not necessarily need it. However, creating a customized Linux distribution can be an enjoyable experience as it allows you to explore alternatives to popular choices like Ubuntu, Fedora or Debian. So I see that Arch Linux is available in ARM64 version here. So I retrieved his ISO, recovery in progress, loading, there you go, 350 Mbytes, not very fast. Ah, here we go, it's accelerating. So what I'll do now is create with Tata, do create, then specify creating a Linux with Linux and name it Arch or Arch64. Later, call him Toto if you want, it's not a problem. So he created the image. If I run the Tata list command, I can see it's here, but there's nothing in it, so it's not useful. I just made an empty image. However, I will then instruct him to charge this specific version of Arch Linux. So, I'm going to do a TART run to tell her to launch the image but specifying the ISO disk that I want her to launch. So the name of the ISO is in Downloads. Here with Archboot behind and there I called it Arch64. And I throw. So he opens the interface for me in the small window and we'll see if he can execute it, launch it. There you go, it's launched. So there, you see, I'm on Arch. Afterwards I have a bootable ISO, simply, you know the story. What's the objective of the game? It's installing the system directly on the VM, so there, it's asking me if I want to install it. I must use setup. Okay, I speak in French. You see, it's super fast. It's as if I had truly installed it natively on my computer. Sets up the network, retrieves the NTP, in short, we choose the mirrors, that's it, finishes the installation. Here, now I have a disk, you see I have a reserved disk of 46 GDB. We can still specify the size of the disk with a command, I will show you. I won't complete the installation, it'll be too lengthy, useless, not the intended purpose, so I'll close it. If I wanted to launch it with a slightly more powerful disk, I should have specified the TART7 command, right? Taking Arch64 course. And there, I specify disk size. And there, I can choose the number of GB I wanted to give. For egg, if I wanted to give 100GB, I do this. There you go. My image VM will have 100GB disks. There you go. Once installed, I just have to do tart run arch64 and it starts. This is an example of installing an ARM64 distribution without using tart's repositories, even though it is most interesting to use the things they already have on their repositories. So as I was saying, be an Ubuntu door effect or a worry-free Mac OS. So I'm going to restart my little Debian like earlier very well. She turns, launched, finally starting, let's say I forget. There I put it in a corner, let it spin, forget. Now I want to connect to it via SSH. How do I do that? It's easy. Retrieve the IP of the machine you want with the TART command. So if I do TART IP Debian, I get the RSIP of my machine. Now I can connect via SSH because SSH is enabled on this image. You know, in order to connect via SSH, we utilize SSH username, arrow base, machine IP address. There, we'll start from unknown principles. So I can stick it here, retrieve it, and put it there. But if I don't know her, I'll just pass her in shell the talom sign followed by the command I typed before. That is a tart IP Debian, and I close the parenthesis. In fact, this command here is nothing more than the same thing here that I typed just above. It will just replace the IP with the command. Entered info, prompted for password admin, logged into Debian, viewing created files like hello txt etc on my system. I am connected to it, then you see the image, I specified a password, etc. But with tools like sshpass, you can pass the password to the distribution, to Debian for example, and be able to remotely launch scripts without having to connect to ssh directly and retrieve a terminal. For instance, it enables you to possess a computer at your residence or your workplace or any desired location with an M1, M2 or M3 server that operates on a Debian or multiple Debians, obviously, and to remotely execute scripts in a single command line without the need to connect, as I did previously with a terminal. Furthermore, when examining the TART commands provided in this context, TART presents SSH password authentication in their warehouse so we can do an install draft.
Scripts can be launched like this, I'll try to zoom in. Scripts can be initiated like this, so that implies I am able to initiate any script or transmit any script as well. For instance, this is a command, just with a command similar to that, and it will send the command to your TART machine. Another interesting thing is the ability to mount a directory. So we're going back to Mac OS, it will be simpler, it will be more fun. Stopping Debian, Tata Machine off, then running Sonoma, created earlier. Do you remember it? Except I'll specify a working dir, so dire equal, and there I'll map actually. You know, it's like with Docker, we map a local dir to a remote dir. Finally, a local directory in Sonoma, for example, the local directory will be called project with two points and it will be sent to a directory at home named downloads, for example. Maybe I won't call it downloads, but I'll call it DL project and I send it like this. So behind I have Sonoma, which is launching. So he kept exactly where I was earlier. So on YouTube and there he keeps in memory. But that's a typical Mac OS behavior, you know, when you restart the machine, it tends to reopen the apps. And if I open Finder, I have here my shared files, so my shared directories. And if I open it, it loads and I find my files that are in my local download directory. So that's how you can also share folders and files. It's actually quite pleasant to use. It's well thought out. Of course, I have right access to the file, but if I launch it with the little option two point row here, it's red only. And then I won't be in red write mode anymore. I'll be in red only mode. So I won't be able to go delete files in my download directory. And we can also like this mount several folders. Just say, put a few, you know, in total. You can make it say, and then you put another directory here. Do say equal project two, for example, two dots. And then you map it to another folder as you wish. There you go. For example, I enlarge the window a bit. It's messy, but I still hope I'm clear. And under Linux, the files will not be found in my shared files. They will need to be mounted, but I refer you to the command specified in the documentation. I don't do it for you because there is not necessarily any interest there, but you see, in fact, we do mount. So this is when we are in the Linux VM. For example, if I was on my Debian earlier, I shared my files, my download directory as I did earlier. Except that now I have to set it up this directory, this shared directory. So there you go, this command with Vertiofs. And we specify the auto mount to MNT shared. In this way, the directory we mounted, the one we stated we desired to share, will be reachable from this path under your Linux operating system. There you go. I think we've covered everything. It's rather, we'll see, quite compact as a tool. If I do Tarte again here, well, you see earlier we tested create, load, run, set. We did it. We can also do get if you want to retrieve all the parameters. For example, if I do get Debian or let's take Sonoma, here are the parameters, the display, the disk ID, or rather the disk usage, sorry, and the memory used and the number of CPUs. We can rename, list, retrieve IP, import, export, suspend, and especially delete if desired. For instance, if I want to delete Debian, I do start delete Debian. There, no confirmation prompt, that's all. After starting the list, Debian is replaced by the loaded images. To delete Arch64, use the command start delete Arch64 and when listing Arch64 will no longer appear. These are the locally created machines. References to imported images cached in the end. Enabling faster retrieval. Capturing a bit of the Docker spirit. If you're familiar with Docker, you won't be too lost. A great tool to manage VMs with silicone, whether it's Linux or Mac OS. Thought you might be interested. It's a little different to talk about Mac OS and Apple silicone. Hope you found it interesting. Hope you liked it. For those without a Mac at home, apologies. For those lacking Apple M1, M2, M3, apologies as well. Next week, we'll do something else, maybe more inclusive. Who knows? On that note, I wish you a good day. Thanks for support. See you. Hello.